Shalom, guys. Oh. And welcome to our first Butler's Unbox Q&A. This edition is Them Kids Are Asleep. All praises. Let's get started. Okay, so at the beginning of the week, we asked on Instagram and on Facebook um, if anybody had any questions because we are finally full-time um, RVers. So I have a few questions and we got them here and we got them on hubby's phone and let's just get started. Yep. Are you woke? I asked him if he's woke because it's late. It's not late. It's what well, is nine o'clock for him. It's late because he got to go work in the morning. But we love to share this adventure and this experience with you guys because it actually comes with way more than we expected ourselves. So if we can shed a little light. That's what we're going to do. So I guess we can start out with the first question it is what do I need to know to start my search for an RV? We took some time and we wrote down what we think that now there's always more. There's no right and wrong answer. These answers come from what we have experienced and what we feel. Okay. So this is all us. This is not concrete out of uh, Google or anything. Like that. It's just what we've experienced. So we took some time and we got four of them for you. So the first one is before you look for an RV, before you think you want to do something like this, as I took the I took the notebook under my belly so it won't move. <laughs> so before you think you want to do this, you need to know why. Why did this thought of doing this RV thing even come in your head? You need to know is it for budget or saving money for get out of debt reasons is it for you just want to travel reasons and you want to be able to travel more freely or it can be like us we just wanted to unbox ourselves from what society says that we need to do to be happy and we just wanted to break free and so the first thing is to know why you're even doing this because the moment something happened what you think you want to do today because something gonna happen right it's gonna happen it's, Something. it's gonna happen stay together you ready it's, it's gonna, gonna happen. happen Something gonna happen and you have to you're gonna have to hold on to the reason why you even started doing this anyway in order to continue um the next one i'll let you take the next thing you need to know before you go and look for an rv is you want me to do it or you got it you got it. Okay. So the next thing is you need to know your budget. You need to know if when we say budget, you need you need to have a budget. And I said that because RV rigs, rigs is your RV. It's your whole setup, right? It can go from the rooter to the tutor. Okay? You can go from an eight thousand, three thousand dollar RV to a hundred thousand dollar RV or more. You can get you a million dollar RV if you got the pocket. You need to know your budget, first and foremost. And that's because you can go and get a used RV, or you can go and get a new RV. You can pay cash, or you can get a note, which still goes back to why are you even doing this journey anyway? Why are you even getting the RV anyway? Is it to save money? Then you probably don't want to get a new one because you probably don't want the note. Is it to travel? You could probably get a note because you might want something new to be more comfortable. Is it to break free? You still need a budget, okay? So you need to know budget, you need to have it. That's that on that. The next one I'm gonna let you take. Okay. Daddy O, it's all you. And uh, the third reason we had was how many people are gonna be going with you? Is it gonna be you, you and your spouse, you, your spouse, and your kids? Yeah. How many kids do you have? All of those things come into play with the size RV that may fit your needs right. better. Right, right. That's so true. And 
the reason why this is very 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 important is because when we were looking for an rv we thought we want why are you looking at me so like into my soul i can oh, see sorry. you are you, look, you looking into my soul right now a little bit what you see making sure you was telling the truth okay anyway <laughs> when we first started looking at, at rvs we thought we wanted an a-class we thought we wanted a motor home and you'll learn the different types of A-class, C-class, fifth wheels, travel trailers, all that stuff. We thought we wanted a A-class motorhome because we wanted to be able to still get up, cook breakfast, do homeschool, do our thing while daddy drives. Um, come to find out, that's not that didn't work for us. And the reason why it didn't work for us, because for one, we wanted to pay cash. We didn't want our notes. And if you try to get a motorhome that's cash, nine times out of ten... You're not going to get one where the kids are away from you. N most A classes, the the only way you're going to get from what I've seen, and I could be wrong for you RV uh, extraordinaires out there, from what I have seen, I have not seen where there's a room from the front and the room in the back because the motor driving part is always in the front. We knew that if we wanted to live in a small space, we still wanted what? Separation. We still wanted some space. I mean, there's three of them in there, and it's a whole nother one coming. So with me having a baby coming, now, yeah, we could have slept in the living room. I don't have a problem with laying at the couch every night so that we can have the uh, access to drive while me and the kids do what we have to do. But with the new baby coming, I know that I have to think about my self-care and I know I have to think about my mental stability, which means postpartum, which is after the baby comes. I knew that I needed space to go to my side of the RV, nurse, sleep, be with the baby, watch a movie on my own, me and him have a long time if we needed it, and them to be able to be free to be children on the other side of the rig. Even though we still hear them, everyone has their own space, right? So you need to know how many people are going with you and how big of a rig you need because that is going to be a game changer in the um what's the word in the layout of the rv that you choose um last but absolutely not least okay um this you it's all you okay and that's if you can work on the rig yourself and explain i'm gonna let you explain that because you're the one who work on it i just i just get in the truck or go inside well, that just plays a part because with the older RV, it's just like a regular home with earthquakes every time you go down the road. So with the older RV, you've got more issues that'll come up that need repair. And it takes someone with a little bit of know-how and a whole lot of drive to be able to keep it up. And if you don't feel like you're that kind of person, then maybe a brand new rig with a warranty is going to be the better way for you even though you're still going to have issues with a brand new rig yeah so it's not like you'll get away from it even if you're not doing it yourself you you know you still have that opportunity to take it to the shop and say hey it's broke it's under warranty i need it fixed i need you to fix it yeah and, and i think it makes a difference but being that you're so handy and I, I did want to refurb. I didn't want to refurb. So I did want to remodel. Going new didn't work for our budget. Going new didn't work for the fact that we have children. Children break things. They break things. They <laughs> waste things. They write on everything. They hit things. They oops. They I didn't mean to. Like So a new rig, at least our first one, at least your first one. I recommend going used just to make sure you even like the whole RV thing yeah, first. Most definitely. Yeah, that's very important. But being that you're so handy and you pretty much know how to fix almost everything, going used was not a problem with us. And I didn't want to go new, first of all, because of the budget. Second of all, because the moment you drive off the lot is one thing that depreciates faster than a vehicle. We ain't got time to be losing no money, okay? Because we work too hard for it, right? Right. Amen. Question number two. Question number two is simple. What do we do for work? And are we stationary? So the work part, I'm going to let him take because I stay at home with the kids for the past seven years. 
for the moment, uh, I am uh, I drive a truck, I drive a semi, and that's what I'm gonna do until the end of the year at least, uh, just because it's decent money and mm -hmm. it's enough to afford us to get what we need and you know, of course benefits. And it's something that I can do and still be home Monday through Friday at a decent time, most of the time. And as far as stationary, we are stationary at the moment, uh, just simply because of the situation with, of course, her being pregnant. So, yay. Got doctor's appointments and yeah. all that good jazz. And it's just, it's more convenient and a smarter choice in our minds to be stationary at one's place right now. Also, to go along with that, we chose to be stationary for the most part. Now, we do have some trips coming up between now and December. Um, we chose to find a something called a home base. A home base is pretty much where um, you have some always have somewhere to come to to hook up for electric, water, and sewer. So, we were blessed to find that literally 30 minutes down the road from the house that we had. And... Um, like I said, it just allows us to come back so I can make my doctor's appointments. And once the baby get here, I have a solid place to heal. You know, family can come visit. Um, of course, family can't stay with us, but we can always get an Airbnb where everybody can be in one big house. So for now, we're stationary, but we do have plans on camping in October. Um, we do have plans on hopefully going down to see his side of the family in Kentucky. We do have plans to go to, like I said, to make quick trips because he does work and we have to be back so that he can go to work. But I love the fact that we can put everything where it needs to be, hook it up to a truck, go visit, come back, unhook, put everything back out, and we station. So that's pretty awesome. So for now, we are stationed, but stay tuned because we will have trips coming up. Ready for the next one? Sure. Next question is, RV must-haves. Again, this is our must-haves. And this is only so far. Yeah. This is We're only a week in. Okay? And stuff has already happened. Right. Before we even became a week in. But it's okay. Yeah. Because we are here. Yeah, and things will happen. And it's going to happen. But the Most High got us, so we're going to keep it moving. So the first must have is all him. And that is you need the proper tow vehicle. There you go. All you go. Most definitely. Uh, the reason we put that first is because a lot of people kind of skip over that when they go looking for their RV of choice. Yeah. And they have a really nice F-150 or Chevy half ton pickup truck. And they'll go to the dealership and they'll be like, yeah, you can tow this. You're good to go. And you're really underrated. And honestly, especially for RV newbies, yeah. to have at least the properly set up tow vehicle that will stop your, stop your rig if you need to. And it will pull it safely and handle the weight in a safe manner going down the road yeah. is number one. Especially in the learning phases. Because the learning phases... It could be a, a, a really, really just just normal learning phase where you, oh, I'll figure out, well, I shouldn't do that, I shouldn't do this. Or it could be devastating. And you <laughs> want to avoid that by uh -huh. just being smart up yeah. front. Just saying, yeah. okay. And doing a lot of research. Do your search. research yeah. before you decide to get an RV to make sure that either the truck that you have can pull what you want to get safely or you make sure that you do the research to figure out, okay, well, I need to get this size truck before I get the camper. That way, you know, you're you're already prepared and you don't have to worry about upgrading later. That's that's facts. Yes. Facts. We actually bought safety first. Yeah, we actually bought a truck. First we had a different truck. Then we had to sell that truck because you can't pull a fifth of what we had. You make it pull a travel trailer, a travel trailer ain't gonna work for us. So we had to sell that truck. Then we bought a truck and then that truck it seemed like it was a little low. It was a little too low, and I didn't care for the inside. I thought the inside was a little squishy for all of us to be in there. So then we bought a whole nother truck. So we sold that truck back out, took the money, bought another truck. 
You just need to make sure you got the right tow vehicle. Do your research on what you think you want before you buy. Do tow vehicle research and then maybe move forward at that point. The second one is you again. The second must have a uh, good surge protector because it doesn't matter if you buy a $70,000 rig, if you hook up to bad electricity, you're gonna be replacing five to $6,000 worth of computers and boards and maybe possibly refrigerators in your RV just because you didn't have a surge protector that cost 150 to $300. It's worth it up front just to have it, to yeah. have the safe of mind and to protect your investment because it's no worse feeling than just plugging your rig in somewhere and, and boom. you're good and boom and, oh no what's that smell <laughs> and you have to remember this is your home so make that investment and we will definitely put links below to um some of the must-haves that we have purchased so that that way you can have kind of a um what's my word i'm gonna have to edit this that way you can have that way you can have something to look to look at of what we got okay and if you're like you have a wife or a husband like me you need a surge protector that's that's his it's, that helps him out because when we pull up i'm just plugging and he was like no you can't just plug in stuff you have to turn that box off first i just go plugging i'm just ready to see some lights on so surge protector is very important the second one is him again and that's a water pressure regulator yeah, that's, that's a must-have. I'm more so on the practical side of things to protect yourself. Uh, uh, proper water pressure regulator is just as important as a surge protector, in my mind. Uh, RVs aren't built as sturdily as traditional houses are, and the water line systems in these aren't built to hold insane pressures. So you may go to a park and the pressure be normal and the next one you go to it may be just crazy. And yeah. you don't you want to protect yourself by just having that they don't cost much. They don't. And it's another protection line between you and a mistake that someone else could have made. Yeah. So that's very important. You don't want to go busting no pipes. No, we don't want that. The next one is all me, okay? And that's command strips and hooks. And I say that because when you're in a small area, in a small space, you, everything needs a place or you will lose it if you're like me. Everything needs a space. Towels can't be in the floor. I can't, I can't, no. Keys need a space. Chargers need a space. Everything needs a space. I need everything. In, and you want to use command strips and hooks because you, you might want to sell your rig back out. And you don't want holes everywhere. Now, I have drilled some things in that he absolutely hates. But I have went on here and just drilled holes in just to hold some of my stuff. But I know how to mud, sand, and paint. Correct? I'll fix it before we try to decide. Before we decide to want to change rigs. But command hooks, they, they come clean off the wall. You're going to want command Velcro because... Like, even things on the little mantle over our TV, you just, instead of trying to move it every time you move the rig, I just stick it down. That way, that decor or that functional whatever can stay in its place and it won't move while the RV is moving. Get command hooks and just buy the bulk pack. Go ahead and buy the bulk pack. I did and I ran out. Everything is glued hook, tape, some. Get you some. The next one is, the next two are all you. And that's some type of water filtering system. What do we have? We have the Berkey, the big Berkey, to be exact. We drink a lot of water. A lot of water. Yeah. But in a in an RV, carrying around cases of water everywhere you go. Ain't happening. It's ridiculous. Not only the weight, but the waste it's just bottles of water everywhere everywhere all the time yeah get your good water filter system it doesn't have to be a big working it doesn't have to be a burkey at all it can mm -hmm. be a, just a really good water filtration system for your rv so yeah. that you can have good clean drinking water because some of the places you go you hook up 
and the water is muddy. Up to par. It's not. When we first turned this one on, it was straight dirt. Yeah. But we will leave a link because we got two different ones. We have the Berkey. We fill it up every day or every other day. Almost every day, right? It's every day. And um, we also have a water filter on the outside. Yeah. So before the water ever touches our pipes, it's being filtered. Well, and, I, and I'll leave a link below on what we got. So that's very, very important because you don't want to get sick hmm. drinking the wrong, wrong water and you cannot you just can't carry around water when you are RVing. There's just no space. Trust me, we have problem grocery shopping at this point. I had he had to put back juice today. Where you gonna put it? Get a filtering system. Last but not least, and of course there are more, but we're trying to keep everything to a minimum. This is our first Q and A video, and we want to make sure we did cover um, everybody's questions. So the last but not least is all you again air compressor and a tire gauge yeah you some people have the fancy bluetooth tpms systems which they're great they're awesome don't know what that and is but <laughs> yeah. they just make sure that you know what your tire pressures are at all times but if, if you don't have the budget for that at least get a keep a tire pressure gauge check your tire pressure before you leave and in the middle of your trips because having a blowout on the side of the road in your RV is it's for the birds. no fun. And it's always good to have air compressor because if you do find you have a slow leak, you can at least air your tire up long enough you know, to get to somewhere where you can get it repaired. And that's... And it goes, and it helps with a lot of things. I see you using it for our bikes. I see you using yeah. it for um, the airbag that's in the... We have, goose box. we have a goose box. And, the, and there's an airbag in there? Yes. I see him airing that up. I see him using, like you can use uh, air pressure for a lot of things. So we just keep one under the rig. Because when it's time to air a tire, I don't have time to win a roadside assistance for some air. I just want some air. <laughs> I just want some air. <laughs> okay. And then, okay, so you went over the tire gauge, right? And so that's, what we chose for the RV must haves for now. We have more, but we're gonna keep it short, simple, and sweet for the time being. The next question is, how did we decide? And it's kind of already been answered, but we're gonna, again, go over it. How did we decide on the rig that we have? Um, we decided strictly because we knew we wanted the space again. We knew that we wanted them over there, us over here. We knew we want the living space to be a common ground for everyone to meet, to watch movies, do um, homeschooling, and to eat. As you can see, living room, dining room, <laughs> kitchen is right there. So this is just our meeting area. And I, I totally enjoy it. And I know when the baby gets here, I'm going to really appreciate that we chose this setup. So that's just how we chose. We also chose it because hauling it. Yeah, I wanted to go bigger. We have a 37-footer. I would love a 42-footer. <laughs> but who's going to drive that right now? I think we should, you know, we figured we should start with this. It's big enough. He's, he's used to driving semis, so it's not difficult for him. But once we, started tra once we start traveling, traveling, we want to be able to fit in some national parks in some areas. And the bigger you go the less places you're able to park in. True. And we don't want them problems yet. No. Now, when this baby come and I feel like I need some more space, we just might have to go bigger. But the good thing about RV living, you can always what? You can always upgrade. Doop. Quicker than you can a full house. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, we had another question, which is not on the notebook. Let's see if we can remember it. And that is our traveling plans, but we kind of went over, already went over that. And the other one is how long do we plan on being stationed? I'm only stationed this long for now because baby will be here in eight weeks. After this, I did not do this journey to be stationed for too long. I did this journey because I want to see stuff. I want to move around. 
I never felt, and tell me if you felt this way, I never felt that we belong in one place. We have moved a couple of times since we've been together. We've been in Kentucky, Illinois, and Tennessee, correct? And I enjoyed each place for that moment, but I never felt like I was ever ready to buy land. I was ever ready to build a house anywhere. I want to see more. I just wanted to see more stuff. I mean, did you, have you felt like there was one spot you were ready to be at? Well, I haven't seen enough. Right. So, <laughs> so the only reason why we're stationed right now, and I'm having a hard time being stationed, is because I got to get this baby out. When this baby comes out, and I heal. Oh, it's on. Hmm. It's on. So we got to find some different jobs that can continue to travel with us. Because I'm ready to see stuff. I'm ready to give my homeschooling babies so much adventure. We've already talked about what they wanted to do. So I know Jeremiah want to see a beach. Not just any beach. He want a real beach. Okay? So I want to make sure he gets that. Peyton wants to do a water park. But I want her to see one of the best water parks. Noah don't care. He's too. But I want him to do something as well. I just want to see all of the amazing creations God has made, you know, and I'm just ready to, I want him to see more. And, and honestly, I'm so excited for him to see more than the kids. And that's because he has worked so much in the past eight years that we've been together that anything and almost everything we've done, he has missed out because he has to work. And me and the kids were just go and do those things. I It's no fun unless your whole team winning. And I'm ready for him to see the things I have seen. And I want the children to be able to say, I loved being homeschooled. We did a lot. I saw a lot. So we're just stationed for the moment. And then we're out of here. And last but not least, the question is, my birthing plans while living in an RV... Let me straighten this out. The same plans I would have if I had a house. Right? Okay. So we're going to bring the little sucker on in here once I have them. Now, we will probably be in Airbnb for a week um, once I have them and come out of the hospital. And that's only because my sister wants to come down. Um, my mom want to be in the sound of the same roof. And my brother wants to come down as well. So, yeah, we're not going to fit in here. So we're all going to just go half on a big Airbnb and enjoy each other there so that I can get some rest. They can meet new baby. After that, I'm bringing him up in here. I give him about four weeks because I want to heal. I don't want to sit back. I had to sit back with one of them. We don't want those problems. I'm going to heal. And we out of here. And we're going to go wherever the most high bless us to go. And I can't wait. I'm excited to move these wheels. I know. Are you ready? Yep. While we're talking about it, what's what what's one place you want to do? Yeah, I don't know where you want to go. I know, I know, no, I know where you want to go. He wants to go in California. It's called what? Is it in California? <laughs> what park you want to go? Smoky Mountains. <laughs> Uh, Lake Tahoe? I'd like to go to Lake Tahoe. I want to do so much. I want to go. I just want to do so much. I just want to do so much. Baby, you hear us? Okay. You got to come on out, but you finish cooking first. Where do you want to go? I want to the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon. I'm ready. It's far. It's pretty. Not that far. It's like a day, ain't it? pretty far but at least I can take my bed with me all right guys so that's the that's the questions we've had most of the questions were repetitive so we just put them all together I will tag those who asked the questions so that you can make sure you see your answer other than that thank you for watching our first butlers unboxed Q&A day video and don't forget to check out our patreon page below Become a part of the family. Thank you all for your support. Was that your knee? That was definitely my knee. That hurt You really sound bad. like you need some WD-40 or something. <sighs> yeah. And become a part of the family. Help support. We enjoy being a light of the grace and the mercy that Abia gives us to live this journey. Finally, it was just talks for three years ago.
now we're sitting in an RV. Hmm. It's still not real to me. Is oh, it? Oh, it's real. I is it? Are you saying that in a bad way? No, I'm not saying that in a bad way. Not at all. It's just in a. I'm looking around at it. It's, it's definitely real. The kids are asleep. They're sleeping good. They sleep two hours they sleep longer. Better than they did in the house. They sleep two hours longer in here than they did in any house that we had. Facts. Facts. We sleep pretty good too. Okay, we're just rambling at this point. Okay, well, thank you for watching. And don't forget, unbox yourself. It's time for you to finally live a life that you always wanted. You won't regret it. Shalom.